Uh, good afternoon, everyone who's joining us. Thank you very much for joining us about how to get into drama. I will, I will give you a quick caveat before we sort of uh, move on to say that the two people that are on my panel today have both joined in the script department. So if you're looking for production or you're looking for something else, we may not be able to help you. But um, we have two people who got into the very difficult area of drama, which is to get themselves landed in a script department. My name is Edie Smokum and I work for an organization called Think Bigger. And I'm joined this afternoon by Sarah McLean, who has um, a wonderful job at Hollyoaks that I'm going to let her tell you about because apparently it has something to do with continuity. So she keeps track of who's doing what to whom. And Dan <laughs> Brown, who has recently joined ITV Studios in um, as a script development person. Is that right? Is that the official title? Dan? Uh, I'm development editor. A development editor. So um, uh, Dan is looking for sort of new ideas and how to bring them on. Um, if I could ask you both in the first place, but I, why I asked you both to be on this panel is that I think getting into drama is very difficult or is it's seen to be very difficult and getting into the script departments sort of even more so. And I know that um, both of you, as we found out just before we came on board, had a, um, a university education in creative writing and you did those degrees and I'll ask you about those in a minute. Um, but if you could tell me a bit about sort of, maybe starting with you, Dan, because you were a little bit ahead of Sarah, sort of what you did out of university, what your first steps were te in television, and then how you managed to get into drama. Yeah, so I did um, English literature at university and then I did a master in creative writing. And after that, I got into the, I basically applied for everything that I could, got rejected from everything. <laughs> um, and the Channel 4, Channel 4 for um, advertising for production centers on the Channel for Production Training Scheme, uh, which Think Bigger ran the training for. And I applied for that and I didn't hear back for ages. And then I was invited to this sort of big open day sort of interview where we had to in interview with different indies. And that was actually for factual TV, it wasn't drama. Um, and I got placed with a company called IWD, who are based up in Gladstone. And I was a researcher there. And because it was with Channel 4, um, I was very insistent on then I want to work in drama. So I was basically knocked in every door that I could. I passed a UED, I passed a DAM at the time, and sort of every, uh, everyone at Channel 4. And I got introduced to the head of development at Channel 4 Drama at the time, um, Matthew Wilson. And at that point, I was thinking of moving to London, and he put me in touch with a lot of independent production companies. I basically just went around and emailed them and said, hi, I really want to work in drama. And I started getting script reading work that way. Uh, and then it progressed into sort of other roles. Um, yeah, so that's how, that was my path. Excellent. Now, Sarah, you had a similar path, but slightly different. And you always knew, a bit like Dan, that you wanted to be in drama, but started somewhere else. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, the, the beginning's very similar to Dan. Uh, I did English literature and French. I did a master's in creative writing. Um, <clears throat> I didn't really think about working in TV after uni, to be honest. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do apart from be an author. Um, and then I, it was my mom's friend sent me the tweet of the Channel 4 uh, production training scheme, which I then applied for. And I was placed at Multistory Media in Manchester, uh, who are a part of ITV and also make um, factual shows. So it was a great, great time and um, had a lovely time at the company. But I always knew I wanted to be in drama because that's what I watched, what I was passionate about. Um, and like Dan, I just I, I pestered everyone. And um, I was also the we were the lucky bunch of trainees who um, had the pandemic in the middle of our, our training scheme as well. So, I mean, obviously it was very unfortunate, but it did mean that everyone was in the house and available. So, you know, script supervisors and um, heads of drama that they were in their kitchens, too. So I was like, OK, I'm going to video call them, ask if they're you know happy to have a chat with me um, and got some great advice. And I eventually I got an interview for Hollyoaks and um, for another job, which I didn't get. 
However, my feedback was that I had a great passion um, and knowledge for the show. So when the position I'm currently in came up, the continuity editor, I applied for that and made sure I said, you know, I've had this interview, which I didn't get, but I was told that I had great passion and I'd love to demonstrate that passion in this role. Um, and yeah, I, I obviously secured that role. Excellent, Sarah. So I'll ask you about your sort of individual jobs at the minute, but because this um, title is getting started in drama, we'll go back to sort of a bit of a start. And Dan, Daniel, you did something that lots of people have to do who want to work in the script department, is that you read scripts for people. Can you tell us a bit about how you get into that? Because I always get asked, you know, how do you start yeah. script reading for, for companies? Um, yeah, so basically I just... Um email sort of like you know, quite a lot of independent production companies and the good thing I think about drama and I think about TV in general is that if you say to people you know I'm passionate and I'm interested in this and I want to do this can you just meet me for a coffee and can I get some advice from you nine times out of ten they would say yes um, and I just email I just met people and said I really want to work in the script department and they said well would you like to do a trial script report so it wasn't a script report that i was getting paid for but it was basically to see if i could do it um because you have to show that you can analyze a script and assess its viability for tv and it's not just scripts you actually have to read books as well uh, and when you do that you know if they like what they see they will just keep sending you stuff and it's actually not a bad way to make a bit of, I guess, pocket money. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's not the most. It's not. The, it, you're not going to get a salary from it. But you know, if you work, if you work for multiple companies, you can build up quite a good sort of um, amount of money, and that's a really good way to show people what your taste is and how you approach a script, and then often the invite you to interviews, you know, if a position opened up um, a production of in house, you would kind of be top of the pair. Uh, and yeah, that that kind of how I actually started script reading for a company, uh, a big company in London called um Sister Pictures. The Sister. big uh, yeah, the big drama indie. At that time they were kind of starting out and they then and a, a month into reading for them, I was invited to um, interview for a development editing job. But I didn't get that job because I didn't have enough script reading experience and the person that got the job over me did. But they then invited me, they then recommended me to interview for a writer women editing job. Um, and I ended up getting that. And that kind of what got me into drama. Um, so yeah, like basically script reading, you just have to meet as many people as you can, offer to read scripts um, and say, I want to do this. And they they need people to read. Honestly, the amount of stuff that we got here at ITV is ridiculous. And every company needs readers. Um, they really do. And it's definitely a good way. Yeah. Yeah. So I just think to pick up on sorry what Dan's saying there as well in terms of another quite good resource um, is competitions. So yeah. um, BAFTA Rockcliffe, for example, they do a writers' competition and they need readers to read the entries. Um, so production companies are are amazing and what you want. But I read for BAFTA and that can be another good way because again, you know, you do the trial report and if you um, pass it, they 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 do pay you. So they're a resource. Sarah, that's really interesting. Can you just back back up a bit and tell us how you become a script reader for competition? So how did you do it for BAFTA Rockcliffe? Um, <clears throat> so I um, followed them on their Facebook page. This, this is just to kind of start with that. I think any kind of companies you're interested in, um, any shows you like, you know, and you can find out which company made that show, follow them on, on social media um, because you know, it's, it's all there. It's, it's a great resource. And um, so I saw that they were looking for readers um, in the coming months. I emailed them and said, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this. And they said, OK, fill out this form. And then when it comes to the competition, we will uh, email you your, your pack. So I did. Uh, you have to complete a trial script report, as Dan's already said, to prove that you can analyze it. Um, it, it's it's quite a bit of work. You know, they want a few pages from you. They do really want you to demonstrate that you can do it. 
um, and then you if you pass that you get set up with a reader's portal um, and then you you choose kind of if what how, how um, many scripts you'd like to read um, and then they pay you per script again the feedback is is quite detailed but not only is it obviously great for building your profile so you can say you've done it when applying for jobs but it is also just great experience as well because watching something and analyzing a script is completely different you know you're not just a passive audience member you're actively thinking what works and what doesn't um so it's not only great for you know for your career it's, it's just great experience as well so that if you do get into drama you're not going in you know completely unsure of what you're doing i guess dan that's a really good thing to say about drama is that and maybe just sort of slightly different than unscripted and i think if there's any advantage to drama it's that you know, a lot of our audience will be just finishing university and, and trying to take those first steps into drama. And actually, there's lots of really good information out there for people and opportunities that they can do, even if it's sort of why they're still at university. There's no reason why you can't read while you're still at university. Is that is that mm. right? Yeah. I, I definitely, I definitely something that you can do from home. You know, yeah. that, that's the beauty of it. You don't have to um, you don't have to write until you're out of university because, you know, I, I think about when I was at uni and the amount of free time that I had, you know, if I got a head start and sort of reading stuff, then, um, yeah, that, that, yeah, you can definitely do it sort of any time and any place, I think, but, um, yeah. Excellent. And Sarah, if I can ask you now, because you you can tell us some tales out of um, school, what do you actually do at Hollyoaks? And what's this job <laughs> you know, that, that you're involved in? What do you actually do on a daily basis at Hollyoaks? Good question. Uh, okay, so I am the continuity editor, <clears throat> which means that I'm responsible for making sure all the little details are correct across the scripts. So, you know, who's been sleeping with who and who knows about it? Um, where does that person work? Were they sacked two weeks ago? Are they still there? All that sort of stuff, um, which for anyone who watches soaps and particularly Hollyoaks, I'd say that that is ever changing. Um, and obviously, you know, you, you on five nights a week, five episodes a week, uh, things move at a great pace. So yeah, so basically I, I read all the scripts and provide notes um, on these continuity issues. And I think What's really interesting about the job as well is I see the scripts at first draft stage, so when they're first issued, and then I see the final versions of them. So I can see how much has changed um, and which stories have had to be tweaked because they, they did, didn't did work. Um, so it's, it's a great learning curve as well as providing the notes. You, you're really getting that insight into how scripts develop and how many people are involved um, in, in that final product as well. And Dan, that's a really good sort of point of view as well. I mean, you didn't get the job that you wanted, but you got a job as an assistant. Can you can you talk about how important it is to be an assistant and what you get to see as an assistant that makes it a good job? Yeah, that was actually a blessing in disguise, I think, because the you know it's very rare that you you get it's becoming more common now because a lot of Americans do co-productions in the UK. But that was a fully fledged writer room. So I was working with the showrunners, um, Dan Vincent and Jonathan Brackley, the, the creators of Human in Channel 4. Um, and it was a new show for AMD and there was about 10 other writers, maybe seven, I can't quite remember, but writers at the top of the game. And you're literally just sat in the room struggling in an entire series for like two weeks. Mm. And then, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I had to do the stuff like, running out and getting coffees, you know, and stuff and making sure that they had enough hagabo and like chocolate and stuff. But um <laughs> like it's very important. Yeah, very yeah. yeah. important to create a photo. Um they hated me at the end of it because I think I made them put on weight. Right. But um no it's 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 very it was really it was a really great job because they knew what I wanted to do and they kind of chucked everything at me. You know, I read of every draft of the script after we did the storyline and, and work with the script editor um, to like give notes or did research and yeah it was really great to be in the room and um, yeah it was, um, it, was, it was intense and it was like a five month job but it, I think it really did set me up quite well uh, and the great thing about the job as well is that it wasn't just the company that I had a connection with, it was the two showrunners who 
a kind of my mentors now. Mm -hmm. And the, or the other writers, and the script editor and the struggle producer. So you already have a network there that you can really sort of like fall back on, um, which I think is really important in drama, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe that's a really good uh, point. I will take questions. Um, you're you're um, doing brilliantly sort of uh, writing in questions for us, everybody. We will get to you in a minute. I'm just trying to sort of cover off everything before uh, we open it up. But it would be really good for both of you maybe just to chat about the the things that you need to be sort of, you know, good in drama. What, you know, what have you learned from other people, Sarah? What, you know, now that you're at Hollyoaks, um, what do you think? you know, is kind of common amongst the people working in the script department at Holly Oates? <clears throat> um, well, we're all just lovely first, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, so <laughs> I think you need to be a good collaborator, right? That is the main thing because sometimes, particularly the more senior you get, it doesn't really affect me yet, but you'll, you know, love an idea, you'll, you'll love a story, you'll want to take it in a certain direction and someone else will just say no. That, that's not happening we're not doing that for a variety of reasons um they, they might not like it um an actor might be off sick so you can't use them in the scenes you're planning to use them there's so many things uh, in drama and it's such a team effort so you've got to be passionate you've got to love your vision but you've got to understand that that vision is going to change a lot um so yeah i think collaboration and teamwork is a, a main one um it sounds kind of obvious but for me, I think you have to love the show. Um, I think if you, I, I don't know, perhaps on a short running drama, it's, I'm not saying it's not important, but certainly on a soap, I think if you don't like the show, you're not going to like the job. You know, it's, it's you're going to be reading it every day. You're going to be immersed in it. You're going to have to know everything about it. Um, so I think you really have to love it as well. Um, and and I love reading, you know, you're going to, you're going to be doing a lot of reading of the same thing over and over again um, and just keeping that passion alive and, and love of story, I think. Thank you, Sarah. Daniel, what would you say? I, I completely agree with um, Sarah. I think being a collaborator is probably the biggest thing because it's such a people's industry in the sense that, you know, people recommend people the job and they, I work with that person, they're really great, they're a nice person to get along with, you know, people, like, you have to be a nice person <laughs> um, and you have to be willing to work hard. Um, but I think, you know, the thing that I really value in the people that I work with is that ability to, like, analyse, you know, I think especially when you're reading script um and especially if you're a script editor or whatever you do have to be able to analyze it but then you have to be quite creative from coming up with tradition and you have to be willing to really sort of work well on the pressure well because some, one of the job one of the best jobs that I actually, i've actually done was uh, working on holy city um the it's a continuing drama and that is just degrading after degrading after degrading and you really like there were times where there were everything was going wrong and you kind of have to be able to like work under pressure work with someone else and come up with tradition um and yeah i think if you're someone that is nice and had opinion i think opinions are very important Yes, um, yeah. Yeah, everyone very opinionated in drama. Um, dumb. <laughs> it's so true, Daniel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that too much. Yeah, yeah you, ha you have to be able to, sort of, yeah, understand what someone is telling you about a script and then kind of work with it. I, I, that's very vague, but um, yeah, I think being a collaborator and working well under pressure. Good. It's, it's interesting. I just did some training um, last week uh, with my ITV um, production trainees who are working in scripted and they were with Kate Lees, who said that you really do have to really like writers and wanting to work with writers. And that often makes yeah. it very difficult when you're a writer yourself, which you both are. So how do you yeah. how do you switch that off, Sarah, and take the writer out of you to help a, another writer? <sighs> I'm really bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you shouldn't admit that. 
sometimes I just find myself rewriting lines. <laughs> no, that's not it. Um, I think quite a good way to do it is imagine that you've written it. And I don't mean in the sense of you've written it in terms of, you know, what changes necessarily. I just mean appreciate how precious that script is to that writer, you know, because obviously everyone needs constructive criticism and we all say that, but really... I think Sarah slightly froze there. Oh, Sorry, you slightly really? froze there, Sarah. There you are. Go ahead, Sarah. On my back. Okay. Um, yeah, back. I was just saying it. it great. Um, I was just saying it's important to be tasked with writers. You know, they, they say they want constructive criticism, but they also want to know their script's wonderful. You know, it's, it is their baby. Um, so I think having that balance, there'll always be something positive about a script doesn't matter who's written it or what it you know there's always going to be great things um so i think just making sure you balance that and you know acknowledging again that, that it's a team effort that the writer's done a great job but i mean what what do we need to tweak um what what are we aiming for with the audience here and most writers are, are going to get that you know that they're in tv they know um that, that things are going to change and that a lot of people are going to be in on that script but you have to acknowledge that script is a part of them and I think as a writer myself I do feel like I understand that and how um important it is you know my um line manager who's, who's pretty high up he's just had his first script commissioned and he he was really nervous about the feedback he was going to get and I was reading it and he was like oh is it okay is it okay and I was like you know David it's great like don't worry but it's a big thing for writers so remembering that and how personal it is, is really important, I think. And that's what I tried to do. Oh, so that's a really good point about, you know what I mean, just remembering that you're trying to help a writer and as opposed to, yeah. you know what I mean, just give lots of feedback. And Daniel, what about you? Because again, you you are a writer that now has an agent, I think. So, you know what I mean, how do you separate those two things out? I, I completely agree with what Stagger was saying. I think you have to have empathy, most of all. I think being a writer does help with that empathy and kind of going, you know, it's really hard, you know, it's really hard to write a script, and you know, it's really hard to put yourself in that creative mind space. So I think, yeah, you kind of have to be that shield, you know, the, like the production behind you. But in terms of how I separate it, <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's, a, it's a good good question. Um, yeah, I think you have to, I think for me, it helps to know what the writer going through mm -hmm. at certain days. Mm -hmm. But in terms of separating it, you do have to do it through the writer's eyes, but you also have to be aware that you will have your own opinion and your own thing about what you would send, but you have to sort of understand what the writer was trying to achieve in the first place. So I think as a script editor, it's about trying to meet them in the middle and yeah. sort, of, sort of saying to them, I get what you're trying to do, and I can do what you're trying to do, but, you know, you could say to them, yeah, you've got 10 pages here, but if you want in, and you're like, it can be two pages, you know, that like you can really condense it. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can say to them, look, I know that you put in sort of like a lot of emotion, but a lot of that can be done in the production. Yeah, you know, the director can do that, or it can be done in post production. So I think, yeah, like I'm a massive overthinker. So <laughs> I think to my detriment, and um, writers, I think, are the biggest overthinkers of tomorrow. And right. I think, yeah, I think it's just having that empathy really to yeah. understand it's, what it's they're going through. There's a both you've both made really great comments there, um, and it kind of follows on. So I'm going to ask the question uh, that's come from the audience at the moment, um, which is, can you get into script development without script writing experience? And do I have to have done a creative writing um, degree? And before I turn over to Daniel and Sarah to answer that, I can just say that we've just recruited um, for a Channel 4 production training scheme that I'm working on that's all for scripted. And interestingly enough, um, we have a biochemist, we have a mental health, a former mental health nurse. Um, we have lots of people who haven't come from that background at, at all, actually. But the two things that they do share is kind of, I think they both have lots of empathy. Um, they, and I think the second thing is that they have a real love of drama. 
And I think that's a really important thing that actually you have to watch lots of drama, don't you, Sarah? You have to kind of follow lots of things. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the main thing. I mean, the short answer to the audience question is no. Um, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you don't have to have any qualifications um, in the same way that, you know, many writers will not have, have any qualifications. Um, it's about honing your craft and the best way to hone your craft is, is to watch. You know, um, everyone, all, all writers learn from other writers. Um, you know, don't they just say that writing is just plagiarism? Um, <laughs> it's you are you're just picking up on what people have done well, and then replicating that in whatever story you're trying to tell and your own unique spin on it. Um, so yeah, I think that the main thing is watching watching drama, also reading scripts to get a feel of you know how it is on paper because it, it always amazes me. Even now, I'll read something in Hollyoaks and I'll be like. Mm, don't know about that and then I'll see it on screen and go oh, that was really good you know, the actors they really do bring things to life um and in terms of reading scripts uh BBC uh have a, a whole archive of, of scripts uh, mm. that they've you know have already been on that you can look at so I think definitely watching drama is number one and um, but having a read of those scripts as well to, to just kind of study your favorite shows and, and and break them down you know what what did you like and why did you like it it's simple questions but that's what audiences that you know that's what drives audiences and so that's what drives us excellent daniel would you agree with that yeah i completely agree i would add to it that you know when i did the channel four thing originally with think bigger UDA, I wasn't that well versed in british tv uh and i think when you're a student you do watch the american stuff you watch netflix and amazon and there's a big variety of shows and they're great but you have to know you have to know British TV, you have to know BBC, yes. what's on BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5, etc. You just, um, you really have to know that landscape because that's the people you're going to be meeting. You know, mm -hmm. that, you know, obviously Netflix and Amazon have bases here and there's more stuff coming out here, but they're mostly in LA and hopefully eventually we'll end up there, but, um, well, if we want to, but, um, yeah, they, they, you really do have to book British TV. Um, and you have to know every single question that gets answered, get, that gets asked in every meeting that I've ever had is what, do, what have we been watching recently? Mm -hmm. What do you like? And then what writers do you like? You mm -hmm. have to know the writers of those things. Yes, and I yes, think if you yes. know the writers of those things and you have a list of writers, they go, that will make them go, or oh, that's someone that's actually paying attention. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, that's every company you meet, make sure that you watch something that they've made. Or uh, even if it's a mm -hmm. producer that you meet, make sure you watch something that they've made because you want to talk about it and you want to show that you've done your research. So, that, that's so true. As somebody that interviews people for schemes all the time, um, the number of people who come in and only want to talk about American shows, and it's like, I can't do anything for you. I can't give you a job on yeah. an American show. Mm -hmm. So unless you like a British show and you want to talk to me about a British program, I've got nothing for you. You know, I, I can't let you have, you know, sort of, you know, desperate housewives. I can't let you, ha you know, have, yeah. you know, any of the big American shows. I can't, you know, I, I just can't do that for you. So it's really important that you do watch British television and mm -hmm. that you actually have opinions about it. And this is a really important thing, I think, for anyone in the audience who wants to get into drama. Um, Daniel's quite right. You need opinions about what you like on television, what's working, what what you know, what's not working as well, what worked really well in the first series but fell apart in the second yeah. series. And it's those kind of opinions which you just have to have as a viewer. You know what I mean? They're not, you know, you don't have to do courses for them. You don't have to necessarily read all the books to know how to do um, you know, to be a script reader. What you really have to do yeah. is watch things and read things. And Sarah is yeah. quite right. If you go to the BBC Writers Room website, there's huge number of scripts available there and some really good scripts and if you just google um you'll come up with some really good you know uh scripts to have a look at um uh, and yeah. that's a really important thing that you understand what scripts actually look like do you know, mm -hmm. that, you know and how they yeah. get made into into dramas it's not you know it, it is very hard but it's also not rocket science you know there's, there's other things yeah. in life that you know that are harder I mean, television is arguably one of the most accessible things, right? I mean, we all watch TV, unless you live on another planet. You, you've watched TV, so just think about it like that. Everyone loves it. Why is that? Why do you love it? And, and that's what television people want to hear. You know, they want to hear yeah. that you love it, and, and why? <clears throat> uh, this is 
doubt it. They should just um, maybe a bit of a tip, but um, you know, maybe a bit more specific to those that are based in London, but go to the theatre um, because quite a lot of big TV writers come from theatre. And if you can say that I went to the Royal Court and wrote the play from this up and coming playwright, uh, you know, even if you went to the Edinburgh Fringe and you saw plays that you really like and you spoke about them to the people that you meet, they will remember it because and they will take notes because they're always looking for stuff, they're always looking for new writers. Uh, people by the bridge, you know, how three bags were doing at, you know, Edinburgh Fringe and then that became the TV show that it is. And I think having that experience is valuable. And I would just add to the sort of script reading thing. It's really great to read for production companies and broadcasters, but the authors are also always looking for readers, you know, like the Royal Court and the Star Hall Theatre, even if it's your local theatre. Wherever you're based, you can kind of get in touch with them and ask if you can read stuff for them. Mm. I think that's really good because actually, you're quite right. Um, a lot of writers in this country come from theatre, and actually going to see early writers and writers that you like and keeping in touch with them. Um, yeah. This was a recommendation uh, we had the lovely Catherine Oldfield from Tall uh, Story Pictures last week uh, in seeing my trainees, and she said, "You know, this is what you can do as a young person. You can go to the theatre all the time, um, and you can start sort of thinking about writers. And even though you can't do anything for them at that stage, tell them that you really like their writing. Tell them that you're, you know, interested in knowing what they." what they're doing next and, and to start a relationship because one of the things that you have to do in the script department is actually have proper relationships with writers and actually be able to yeah. develop them um somebody's asked a very good question which is about how do you go about cold emailing people you know is there any <laughs> do's and don'ts that you have about you know throwing out an email to somebody what what are your sort of key tips and, and hints in that sarah do you want to start with that one yeah um so if if you can this isn't always possible but if you can get a recommendation from someone that's amazing so you know i used to, like the series producer on hollyoaks for example who i emailed um, i was working with someone in factual who who was on the same scheme that he was on so I, he was like oh i'll put you in touch with him and then i emailed yeah. and said oh hello you know fabian said that you might be happy to speak to me blah 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 so it's always good if you can if you can you know have that connection um but I, I didn't always, um, but that what you know I did email completely cold as well. I would say the do's um, say that you say that you like whatever show they're working on, um, and, and make sure it's true, right? Don't because people I think it's people will be able to spot it, you know. If, and 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 if they don't spot it in the email, they're going to know when they talk to you if you like that show or not. Um, yeah. So you know, if, if you actually love Coronation Street, say you love Coronation Street, that's great. But if you've never seen it, don't don't say that because they'll know. Um, so that's that's a big do um, and a big don't, I guess. Um, I I get just the usual kind of things like be polite about it, polite and passionate. You know, I used to say, obviously for me, I, I could say I was working in TV already. But even if you're a student and you're studying TV and film, or if you're just you know you're really interested to get into TV, just tell them that and ask them, do they have you know five ten minutes for? Um, so that they can give you a bit of advice you know if, if if they wouldn't possibly mind please 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 thank you you know um be polite be passionate be honest yeah i completely agree i think um that channel when i met the head of development at channel four um and drama he said to me by the way when you email these people just mention my name um and that that was the key Kind of thing because you know what Stego was saying that you know people put you in touch with other people and say I met this person you know you should meet them I think they're really great um yeah and I think don't be there's always this thing in TV that everyone's busy and everyone is busy not a lot of people have time and you know all that stuff and you know like I send very short emails that can come across a great quote blunt but <laughs> maybe it's a bit of a mistake of me of my own when I was starting out but when I was emailing people my emails were quite long maybe a bit too long <laughs> but th th I was very like this is what I've done this is what I love you know like I, I actually a couple of times I've got a disability and I was a counsellor at summer camp and um Camp America for the profession using disability and you know I mentioned that in a couple of emails 
and people really responded to it. I think they could get an interesting perspective that you have in life that everyone else had. And I think, yeah, I think if you can really stand, make yourself stand out um, from the crowd, because these people get emailed from people all the time. And I think the trick is don't email them going, I want a job. You know, you can, you can ask them, you can ask them if they would like to read your TV. Most of the time they will ask you to send a TV. Um, and then, yeah, you'd ask if they have half an hour for a coffee. And I would say that nine times out of 10, they will meet you. I think the really good thing now, because of the pandemic, is the whole use of Zoom and everything kind of means that you can meet anyone anywhere. You don't actually have to be in London anymore. And, you know, I felt like I had to move to London to meet people. That's not really the case now. You know, there's mm. not really an excuse. So, yeah. That's that's actually changed, hasn't it, Daniel? Because you did yeah. that, what, four or five years ago now. So, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. a really, you know, a change. There's, you know, if you're in the nations and regions, you know, do you not feel at this point in time that you have to come to London, look for those companies and those opportunities that are in the areas that you're in. There's a lot of drama being, sh you know, shot outside of London now. And there's a lot of companies that are moving to or actually want to hear from people outside of London. So there's a, mm. you know, it's um, it's finally sort of coming around and it's it's a really great opportunity. Um, Becky has kindly asked, would you recommend getting work experience as a runner or in other areas of development before going into scripted? Or is this a completely different sort of way into television? I would say mm. definitely. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I would definitely no, say, you, you definitely, <laughs> um, I would definitely think, I think being a runner is quite valuable. Yeah. I think if you can be a runner on production, um, I was lucky in the sense that when I would, because I got into channel for production training gym, I kind of, that kind of stepped everyone up, sort of like a wrong in a way. Uh, but when I, I could have continued down that path in that show, and I've had quite a good career that way. But when I know that I wanted to go into drama, I get I did kind of have to step down of stuff like a wrong and then sort of rock my way up. And I think, yeah, being a wrong is a really good way of getting into especially if you're a production runner or a producer assistant or whatever, and they like you, then they could, you know, take an office wrong a job going, or if they, you know, a PA job going within the production company, grab that, really grab that with both hands. Because so many people that I know, you know, they, they did that and then they became development assistant and then, you know, they became assistant script editor and then script editor and then starting a just such a common pathway for so many people. So definitely try and get a wrong job. <laughs> The, the um before you answer Sarah and I will let you answer I promise Sarah but I think this important <laughs> thing about being a runner and it, it doesn't matter whether you're an office runner whether you're running on production whether you're you know an assistant in the script department is that you get to meet so many people and then you get to observe what people are doing so that you get a better understanding of what the jobs are and once you're in mm. television if you keep your head down and work hard you know everyone has started where you're starting so they're really happy to help you so if you take feedback from people if you listen to the advice people are giving you it's really hard to kind of fall out of that do you know I, I always say to people if you do nothing else in television just work hard keep your head down and work hard but Sarah yeah. you know Sarah you've seen other people come into Hollyoaks what sort of how, how are you meeting people that get into Hollyoaks Um, how am I meeting people who, who have got in Sorry. after me, you mean? Yes, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, the, I think the one thing that people always ask is, oh, how did you arrive at Hollyoaks? Or how did you get, you know, get your job here? And what are you finding that people are doing to get into Hollyoaks? Um, well, I think in terms of us, again, we've got quite a few people who have been on um, training that ED runs uh, in the past, so definitely schemes like that. Um, so ED's just recruiting everyone in Hollyoaks, so just speak to ED. <laughs> um, so yeah, train schemes schemes that are aimed at people who don't have connections, right? Because as we've already discussed, television is, is very much based on your reputation. If you work hard, you will be recommended to people, which is great once you're in, um, but you know, until you're in, how you obviously you can't prove yourself. So looking for um schemes like that, that that are you know based for students new starters anyone who's not been in television before 
Um, from other, obviously from other soaps as well, the soap world is very small, like all worlds, you know, people tend to move around, um, which is, is great. You, you get to have a go on all of them a lot of the time if you want to. Um, I think just a recommendation for scripted jobs in general, there is a Facebook group called Script Editor Forum. Um, and it's it, it's a, one of those groups you have to request to join, but it, it's just brilliant. Um, I've seen so many jobs advertised there. I think mine was. Uh, it's it, it's a fantastic resource. Um, and just to just to go back to to Becky's question about being a runner, um, anything you can do to get into TV, do it because once you're in the world, then you, you're going to meet people, as Edie says, and you're going to be able to say, "I work in this company." However, I'd really like to make this transition, um, just as me and Dan have done. So, you know, if you get a job in TV, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn it down if it's the industry you want to get into. I, I wouldn't be afraid of speaking up about what you want to do, though. You mm. know. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that's true of both of you too. Do you know what I mean? You were both very clear that you wanted to work in drama. You talked to people yeah. about that. You let people know, you know, you you both worked very hard in the companies that you were in, despite the fact that neither of them were drama companies or companies that produce drama. But you were actually really good at, and it was because you worked so hard, people wanted to help you. They wanted both of you to do well. And I think that's really important as well, is that, you know, if you're not doing what you you know what you necessarily want to do you don't think of that as not being a stepping stone to that and mm -hmm. the more positive you are bizarrely enough television is always i think a, a very helpful place some you know it can be really helpful when you're starting out to find you something uh, we've only got about a minute left so i don't want to take another question um they've asked if you can share sort of uh, any of your linkedin but you'll find sarah mclean and, and dan brown and i'm sure that um both of them would be happy to uh connect with you um, and I, I wanted to say on behalf of uh, the RTS to make sure that you're going to see the exhibitors and everyone else this afternoon. And finally, I would really like to thank both Daniel and both Sarah, who I think are proof that actually if you hang on long enough, that you will be absolutely sort of, um, you know, there would be a place for you in drama. Um, and in the meantime, if you do nothing else, think of all they're going to ask you to do is watch lots of drama and read lots of scripts. And that's not a hard ask by any stretch of the imagination. So if, if you think that it's hard to get in, just do that bit of it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.